Pick up five. Sorry, Troy. Unless you've got another king. I certainly have. Pick up ten, Donald. I think not. Pick up fifteen, Gavin. Well, this is ridiculous. There aren't 15 cards to pick up. Calm down, Gladys. It's only a game. No, Gavin's right. It's too hot for cards. What say we all have a post-breakfast dip in the jacuzzi? Oh yes! That'll do for me. Come on! No, I'm fine here, thank oh, you. Nonsense! We're all going in. Come on! I'm sorry, I said no. Are you OK? Come on! <laughs> Last one in takes it off the board! Oh, that'll be all of us! <laughs> I'm off to get my mum. You're going to talk to Mel. Aye, all, right, all right. You look nice, ma'am. Thank you, darling. I'll be off then. Yeah. Oh, look. The watch is wrong. It's the 12th, not the 11th. I say my watch is wrong. I'm sure it's the 12th today. Yeah, well, that's what you get for buying a cheap watch. Mum, why don't you want me Nana and Mel to get married? Well, my dad said it's because Mel's a nutter. Tell you gonna be all right with baby Coolio? Yeah, of course I am. He is my baby. Right. See you back here later. I thought we could maybe go into the old town for our tea tonight. Just me and you. You kids will be all right, won't you? Yeah. Oh, and you're joking, are you? What's the point of spending money out there when it's all paid for in here? No, you're right. No point at all. Dad, I think Mum's upset. I know. There's something wrong with her watch. <laughs> I don't want to make a big thing of this. I just... I just don't take my clothes off in public. This isn't about body image, is it? Yes, it is, actually. You've got to be joking. You're a fine figure of a man. Oh, please. Look, it's all about how you see yourself. I mean, at home, when I look in the mirror, I don't see a fat person. Really? No, not at all. Right, I see. Where do you buy these mirrors? <laughs> Large vodka and orange, and the gin and tonic. Thanks, Phil. Bit early for this, isn't it? Do you want it or not? There's no need to take that tone with me, lady. It's not my fault your ignorant pig of a husband forgot your ten-year wedding anniversary. We're not here to talk about Mick. We're here to talk about Mel. Oh, no. If you brought me here to try and talk me out of getting married to the man I love, you can stick your vodka and orange up your ass. The man you love? You've only known him 20 minutes. We'll have known each other four weeks on Saturday. And on Saturday, I'll be having a white wedding on the beach here in Benidorm. A white wedding? Who the frig's going to be wearing white? You or him? <laughs> oh, very funny. And you can stay away if you'll be coming out with vicious comments like that. Don't talk rubbish. As if I'm going to stay away from your mother's wedding. Oh, wouldn't make much difference to me. None of my other six daughters will be there. And why do you think that is? Because they're not on holiday with us. No, because you've systematically alienated every one of them. Oh, look who swallowed a bloody dictionary. They may as well be aliens. I'd see them more often. I just don't want someone you've known for three weeks to drive a wedge between yeah. us. No, but you're happy for him to pay for your holiday. You didn't tell me he'd paid until we got it. I thought you'd paid. Don't you raise your voice to me, lady. And it's four weeks, not three weeks. Three weeks, four weeks, does it matter? Just think about what you're doing, Mother. Don't you worry. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I also know that on our ten-year wedding anniversary, I won't be spending it on me own in an empty Spanish bar crying into me gin and tonic, like you. <laughs> Go coffee black, like your women. 
Just a joke to break the ice. We've not really had a chance to talk, have we? So, you and Madge getting married. You sorted out the OK Magazine deal yet? <laughs> you think yourself a bit of a comedian, don't you? Depends how tough the crowd is. Well, do you know what I think? No, I'm a comedian, not a mind reader. <laughs> I think as a man in your late 40s, you should spend less time poking your nose into other people's business and more time looking after your own affairs. Look, can Madge we... and I are in love, we're getting married. Deal with it. I'm 41. <laughs> Here. You know You've been fiddling with that for 20 minutes. Not that I've been watching you. My name's Jack. You're very confident for a 12-year-old. <laughs> I'm 24. Well, it's just the date you're trying to change, is it? Yeah. And if you can't do it, just give it us back. I need to go and find my mother before her battery runs out. <laughs> you are absolutely gorgeous. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Uh, yeah. Does your mother know you talk to women like this? My mum died last year. I'm sorry. And my dad as well. Me and my sister bought this place with the money they left us. Well, I'm very sorry to hear about your parents, Jack. And it's lovely to hear your life story, but I better get going. Hang on. I'm nearly there. You remembered my name. Yeah. I did, didn't I? That means we should run off together into the Mediterranean sunset and get married. All right, I'm up for it. <laughs> Seriously. I'd marry you tomorrow. You're gorgeous. <laughs> I've got enough weddings to go to this week, thank you. All right. I'll settle for a kiss. OK, Jack. We've established you're genuinely hilarious. What we haven't established is that I'm married. What happens in Benidorm? Stays in Benidorm. It's just a kiss. Goodbye, Jack. You'll have a pipe for your drinks. Oh, my bag's on my mother's wheelchair. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Yeah. Yeah. There's your change. Mrs. Stewart. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Come and sit down. Thanks. Now, how's your mum after that terrible business in the pool? Oh, she's okay, thanks. She says she's going to sue the hotel and pay to have the woman's kneecaps broken. You know, the one who threw her in. Still a bit upset, then. You could say that. Oh, dear. And how are you? Well, that's why I'm here, to be honest. I need some advice. Go on. I went to work last night and, well, this was waiting for me. Oh, I haven't got my glasses. Oh. Dear Kelly, I love you. Kelly, I need you. You are not like the other English pig girls. You are kind, beautiful and you do not smell. You've got to admit, he's got away with words. If we cannot be together, I ask for one last night of passion. I know you want this. With one night of passion, I will show you that you need me as much as I need me. Sadly enough, I don't think that's a mistake. Oh, this is a good bit. The throbbing of my heart for you is as big as the throbbing in my trousers, Matteo. Oh, I think I like him again now. P.S. Please do not show this letter to your mother. She is crazy like stabbed bull. <laughs> no, actually, he has got a point with that last bit. Isn't it a shame when the nice-looking ones always turn out to be the nutters? I mean, look at Harry Seacombe. Pass your pen to Kelly Jacqueline. I think we know how to sort this out. Dear Matteo. We should travel more, you know. 
I mean, I know this holiday hasn't exactly gone to plan, but just feel that sun. Next holiday, I know it sounds crazy, but no planning, no booking, just get up and go. Can you imagine how liberating that would be? Yes. I know it's ridiculous, but can you imagine going to the airport, running up to the desk and saying, here's my passport, here's my money, you decide where I'm going. To hell with the consequences, I just need to goddamn get away. <laughs> I'm writing these postcards and I don't know half the people's addresses. What are you writing them for then? I don't know. I can always give them to people when we get home. Save on stamps that way as well. Are you, you alright? Oh yeah. Yeah. Fine, thanks. Hello, it's Chantal, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I was speaking to your mum the other day, and this is your son. Can we have a look at him? Oh, he's taken the son well, hasn't he? Mum! He's mixed race. Oh, right. Like your father. My late husband was half Irish, although you'd never know from just looking at him. Mind you, he never moved his arms when he was dancing, so the clues were there. Jeff, we're going to ask if you could look after my son if we went out for a drink together. Oh, lovely! Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask you, but I forgot. No, that smashing. When are you going out tonight? Yeah. No. I was thinking about maybe tomorrow night. All right. No, actually, tomorrow night's better for me. I'm a bit tied up tonight. I thought we was just doing karaoke tonight. No. No, I'm quite busy tonight. Busy doing what? You know, people to see, places to go. What people have you got to see? You don't know anybody here. Just people. And what places have you got to go to? You've not been outside the building since we got here. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I've got to do all my stuff tonight, isn't it? Well, if you say so. Yeah, I do. Right. Well, anyway, is tomorrow OK for you? Lovely. You bring him any time you want. All right. Well, maybe see you later. Yeah. Cool. Whatever. I go into the chapel and we're going to get married. Will you shut up? Right, I'll have to get back. I've left someone halfway through Wig Wambam. Excuse me, I need to find my wife. Well, I'm not stopping you. No, sorry, I mean, have you seen her? What's she look like? You've seen her with me. Blonde, about average height, very pretty, late 30s, looks younger. Slight intolerance to wheat? No, I can't think who you mean. Looks quite miserable most of the time. Are we? No, I'm not seeing her today. I just assumed she'd gone for a walk, but she's taken her clothes, suitcase. She hasn't left a message here for me. No. Janie. I need you to read this. I'm busy. Janie, please. Oh, for Christ's sake, give us it here. Dear Matteo, I am sorry I have been avoiding you. You are right. Even if we cannot be together, you deserve one last night of passion. Room 204, love, Kay. You're a dirty cat. Kate. Room 204. Don't let them get you down. I'm all right. Well, you don't look all right. 
You've been upset since you came back this afternoon. I said I'm fine. I don't give a shit if they never talk to us ever again. Well, I do. That's my mother. If they want to get married, I say let them get on with it. Now, what is marriage anyway? It do not mean anything. It's only a bit of paper. Mum, are you all right? Janice, what's wrong? What's the matter, love? <laughs> hey! You're not fine. Come on, what have I done? Just tell me what I've done. What have you done? Ten years married and you didn't even buy your wife a card. What are you whittering on about, you daft dumb? Oh, my God. It's all right. You have the brass neck cheek to criticise my fella. You know better than animals. The more are you? Unbelievable. Janice, I'm so sorry. It's all right. But ten years. It's fine. I'm not bothered about that, honestly, mate. I love you. I love you so much. I love you too. Come here. Just try a little wig wham bam. Shit, sorry, Mum, I put you down. It's all right, darling. I want to sing it. I'm going to sing it for your dad. Come on, John! Have you and me and Mum really been married ten years, Dad? Yes, son. Ten wonderful years.
Doctor, how the devil are you? Oh, my God, I'm sorry, I thought... No worries. Are you off to the karaoke? We're nearly done here. Yes, I'll... See, see you downstairs. You're right.